Namaste and welcome to Dr. Shah's clinic. In this particular video, we are going to discuss about premarital fertility testing. What are the tests that you should not do when you are undergoing a premarital fertility testing? This is part two. So in part one of premarital fertility testing, we are basically you know looked at uh, the, the tests that are usually done from a scientific viewpoint for with respect to premarital fertility assessment. And in part two, we are going to look at all the tests that you can actually skip, you know, when you are undergoing a premarital fertility testament, regardless of where you are doing it, right? So maybe your maybe the andrologist you have seen or the sexologist you have seen has given you a battery of tests worth about eighteen thousand rupees, twenty thousand rupees. I don't I don't know the numbers, but I believe that's the going market rates for these tests. So you know he might have given about four or five scans and he would have written about uh, 30, 40 tests. But here's the thing. You don't require half of them, and, I'll, and I'm going to, you know, in the link in the description below on premarital fertility testing, you can have, yeah, put a list of tests that you really don't need prior to your marriage. So, what are the tests that you should not do during a premarital fertility test? Point number one: you definitely don't require semen analysis unless or until there are specific semen parameter abnormalities you suspect. So, if there's a very very low semen volume, right, and if there's blood in the semen, uh, if there's any, if the semen is extremely foul smelling. Or if you if you notice you know you know a gross discrepancy in terms of highly viscous semen or you know semen is very watery or you know you 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 really suspect something is wrong with your semen only then you do a semen analysis otherwise in a routine premarital fertility test you don't need a semen analysis and let me tell you why I have good reasons for it if you look at the clinical literature one thing that we notice is semen parameter problems right so this. Defects in sperm concentration, defects in sperm motility, defects in sperm morphology usually overlap between the fertile as well as the infertile male population. So what basically happens is you may have an individual who has 78 million per ml with a 50% motility which you would term as normosuspermic or a normal semen report. But when that individual tries for a child with his partner, he may never, fa never, fa never father a child in the first year or even the second year. So he may have a hidden male factor subfertility even though his semen parameters look normal. And on the other end of the spectrum, you may have an individual which is with 9 million or 10 million sperms per ml. You, we would term the patient to be oligosuspermic or you know low sperm count. But that individual may have a 50% or 40% motility and he may father a child within the first year of marriage because his partner's fertility compensates for his subfertility. So remember, fertility is a very, very complex thing. And you cannot put a finger on an individual's fertility with just a semen analysis report. All you can tell is, is the report compatible with a pregnancy or is it suspectedly incompatible with a pregnancy. So that's why we don't recommend semen analysis testing before, you know, before a marriage. So post marriage, one year the couple has tried for a child. If there's no pregnancy happening, yes, there's an absolute indication to do a semen analysis. But before marriage, routinely it's not recommended. Unless or until the semen volume is low. If the patient has erectile dysfunction and maybe he has a low libido or maybe androgenization is very poor and he not notices blood in the semen. So there are like you know various indications, there are very specific indications, you know, for a semen analysis during a premarital fertility check. Now, what are the other tests that you should not do during a premarital fertility test? You don't need a chest x-ray, you don't need an ECG. Today, sadly, what's happening in many big laboratories are creating packages, you know, premarital fertility packages. What they are basically doing is they are combining and mixing master health checkups. You know, they are combining a few tests from them from their master health checkup packages into this. And what's basically happening is patients are getting tested for, for things that are not even required. You know, why why on earth should a premarital fertility test involve a chest X-ray and an ECG? Unless or until the patient has had a past history of tuberculosis or maybe the patient is currently carrying pneumonia or some other problem, why on earth should a chest, is a chest X-ray required? It's not required at all, you won't find anything. The same applies to ECG, young individual who is not at risk for a cardiac failure problem. There is absolutely no point taking an ECG. So ECG, and chest X-ray and imaging studies are not indicated for premarital fertility checks. Then what are the other tests that you should not do during a premarital fertility checks? So unnecessary testing of the liver function. Unnecessary testing of the renal function, uh, testing of you know um, uh, what is uh, testing of you know some people even do something like C-reactive protein, uh, thrombin, uh, bleeding time, clotting time. You know I've I've seen, I mean it's unbelievable the kind of tests that I have seen in my clinic from patients who come with reports from outside. Uh, you know a lot of master checkup. You know people do the big labs outside and some of the even very, very popular the doctors. You know they basically write a battery of tests which. I mean, 50% of it is not all required. So, you know, all these peripheral tests are usually not required. Even complete blood count is not required, you know, for premarital fertility checking. So, apart from that, you know, uh, the most important part of this, uh, part of this topic is, uh, you know, there are tests that are done 
during a prenatal fertility check when you go to an endologist or sexologist scans are usually written so the doctor will give you a penile doppler he will recommend a transrectal ultrasound and he will also say to do an ultrasound scan of the scrotum that's the testis please do not do any of these scans they have no value with respect to a prenatal fertility test penile doppler is not going to give you any any information on the organ flow because when when you get an erection during a penile you will first of all you will not get an erection during a penile doppler Point number two, even if, you, even if they give you an injection into the organ and if you get an erection, you're not going to get a full rigid erection. So how on earth are you going to study the blood flow pattern through, through, a, through the penis? It's not possible. So penile Doppler is strictly contraindicated for a, during a pre-metal pre fertility check. It's not even indicated for the erectile dysfunction assessment. There are much better ways, you know, much more objective ways to assess erectile dysfunction. Number two, you don't need a transrectal ultrasound of the scrotum unless or until low semen volume is there. So if you notice only during ejaculation, you notice only one or two drops of semen coming, only then we do a transrectal ultrasound. And we also do a transrectal ultrasound if there's blood in the semen. Otherwise, there's absolutely, absolutely no other indication with respect to prematal fertility testing. Third is ultrasound, uh, ultrasound uh, scan of the testis and scrotum. Okay. Now say, if you have had, uh, you know, bleeding, uh, bleeding while passing urine, bleeding bleeding so blood in the urine you notice blood in the urine you, you have testicular pain you have scrotal pain scrotal infections then yes yes you have to do um, you know an ultrasound scr ultrasound scan of the testis to see if there's any testicular infection if there's epidermal blockages or anything of that so otherwise a simple physical examination of testicular size and epidermal size is usually more than adequate now coming to the last part of premarital fertility testing some doctors also you know end up writing a complete std panel Know, STD, sexually transmitted disease panel. Now, normally during a prenatal fertility test, we don't do all the STDs. We do a very basic set of STDs. That's basically HIV, hepatitis B and C, as well as VDRL, which checks for syphilis. Now, should you do all the STDs like Nessaria, Gonorrhea, Gardella, Vaginus, Urea, Plasma? No, the answer is definitely, definitely no. Unless or until you have been in past, you know, you have been in a past relationship with uh, multiple partners, you have been promiscuous, you have been hanging out with different women at different times. So if you are in a relationship that's usually very wavery and you know which is non-committal, only then before the marriage, I would strongly advise you to go the whole hog and get all STDs assessed for. And that too, the commonly commonly uh, prevalent STDs is what we check for. Otherwise, routinely checking for all STDs and spending you know ten thousands or twenty thousand or thirty thousand rupees on these tests are absolutely not warranted. A good sexual history, psychosexual history usually will give us. Uh, psychosexual come clinical history will give us all the information that we basically need so i found you i hope you found this video very very informative and i hope you take action on this video so you you so empower yourself with the knowledge that you need to help you take the right decision with respect to such tests and you know with respect to the overall concept of you know this prenatal fertility testing don't, don't get uh, caught up with these testing packages you know do the right thing so please like, comment and subscribe and please share this video with all your friends and loved ones. I'm sure they'll find it useful. This is Dr. Shah. Manakam.